In the next 10 seconds, I'm going to say six words, and you're going to keep watching this video because of it. Elder Scrolls, Dark Souls, King Arthur. That is essentially what Tainted Grail, The Fall of Avalon reminds me of, and why I think you're going to love this. For a long time, I've been craving a game that takes that Bethesda formula, but returns to a more old school and hardcore feel, and this is exactly what Tainted Grail seems to be doing. I've been lucky and have had my hands on the major point six Judgment of the Excalibur update that's out right now, which comes with a ton of improvements and updates to the game. So thank you very much to Awaken Realms for sponsoring this video. If you had asked me what I thought was missing from some of the major AAA games these days, it would be that feeling of playing something hardcore. Something that rewards preparation before combat and where it actually feels like systems aren't dumbed down or removed to appeal to a mainstream audience. I must stress that as an early access game, Tainted Grail is not fully finished yet. But what's here is interesting enough to dive into and experience even at this stage. Precisely because it makes use of some important and strong core mechanics that together create a strong gameplay foundation. Tainted Grail takes place in the world of Avalon, a land of legend where King Arthur, the one true king, is dead, and where a mysterious and horrifying plague torments the land and its people. It's with this backdrop that you find yourself locked in the most notorious prison in the world, the Island Asylum, essentially doomed to death and darkness before a stranger helps you escape. If there's one thing that's clear from the start, it's that Tainted Grail is a dark, dark game, and it really doesn't hold any punches. If an asylum isn't enough, we have mutated living dead and red, psychopathic priests experimenting on the living. The idea of this plague, the weirdness, enshrouds this game and everything that happens here, since it is the very reason for Avalon and Camelot's descent into the apocalypse. If simple gore and crazed men weren't enough though, there's so much more mystery and darkness lurking in Avalon that sets it apart from other open world games. Avalon is caught in eternal fall, its trees yellowish and its skies grey. The areas we're playing in are detailed, with abandoned buildings and old fortifications, and I especially love the attention given to lush grass and the lighting, which so often sets the tone and atmosphere here. Where Avalon sets itself apart, however, is in its dedication to its dark lore, which is seen all throughout the game. From the dark depths of horrid prisons, to lonesome statues by the shore, abandoned cemeteries, and rundown villages, the attention to detail here is striking. I particularly love that the game enjoys playing with scale and the horridly fantastical, whether we're talking two grand sword statues impaled into a mountain or two depraved giants slaving away for all eternity. These are the kind of sights that shock you when you see them, and I can think of a few games where the devs might have taken inspiration here. Now, many early access games often feel like early access, very much so, and even though fully released titles can more often than not feel unfinished or just broken, that's what's special about Tainted Grail. Namely that despite being made by an indie team of about 30 to 40 people, and now still only being the 0.6 version, is that the game has surprised me with its content. Despite perhaps not being the most cutting edge in the world, the visuals hold up just fine or look actively great, especially in the right conditions, whether by the beach at night or during an intense fight, surrounded by lush grass. The fact that every NPC you can interact with is fully voiced is actually crazy cool, and I have to say that the voice acting, which in indie games is often so undependable, is actually more often than not really good here. Whether we're talking about a determined woman, Caradoc, we weren't born yesterday. No one would risk getting into trouble with the priests for nothing. Why did you save us? An old angry man? When that Egypt gets an order, he's like a priest who stumbled upon an orgy. He's got a stick up his ass. Nothing gets through to him. Or the responsible quartermaster. I can't let just anyone into the captain's quarters. He's a very busy man, you see. I don't want to waste his time. Indeed, wherever these deliveries matter, Tainted Grail does indeed deliver, and it means so much in a scene like this where we end up meeting a most unusually interesting being. I have been waiting a long time for someone to find me. Are you here to help me leave this place? And yes, we do have dialogue trees here. And yes, combined with a skill system that is similar to other old school RPGs, you are in fact able to change the outcomes of various quests. I was out here hunting a necromancer, as you normally do of course, and I really wanted him to stop necromancing. And since I wasn't strong enough, my words didn't take, and since I didn't have it in me to just leave him there, I had to grab my sword and do the deed instead. It ended up being an intense fight which was awesome, and of course, I love that enemies can in fact hurt other friendly enemies, and it was great that there were several out 
outcomes that could have transpired here. But what really makes our adventure in Avalon fun is the fact that the combat system and everything surrounding it actually feels worthwhile, intense, and as if these roughly 40 devs know how to make a more fun gameplay system than Bethesda itself. My preferred way to do things thus far has been the easy way, run in with a giant sword and hack away at the enemy. Of course, if all you do is hack, you'll soon find that you're gonna have a bad time. Again, and again, and again. Basically no matter who you're up against and how much you're smashing. And this is where Tina Grail's old school, hardcore design philosophy comes in, and it's one I absolutely love. You see, you certainly can do well with just a big ass sword, but you need to know how to use it. This is where the interactive blocking and stamina systems come in. At first glance, combat is very reminiscent of a certain other series. But wait, even if you block an incoming hit, you're actually going to be taking both stamina and even health damage. To avoid this, you need to block at the right time, essentially parrying the enemy, leaving them open to counterattacks from you and keeping your health bar intact at the same time. You can even dodge away if you want, of course with the risk of losing stamina. These same tactics work with other weapon combinations. And yes, there are actually good weapon combinations here. Roll with a big sword, go with the trusty sword and shield, or even equip two long swords for rapid strikes that take the enemy by surprise. There are more combinations than these of course, but whatever you do, it's all about balancing the striking and blocking with stamina usage. Because if you fail to make good use of parrying or fail to time your strikes and dodges, you will run out of stamina, and you will end up like me. And yes, you can in fact be like Aragon and block a throwing knife midair. And yes, it does feel uniquely awesome. Of course, we have the tried and true tactic of being a stealth archer or a stealth swordsman or just a regular archer here as well, but you need to make sure to truly charge that bow shot now if you want those arrows to fly. Further, Tainted Grill even has a full magic system with all the bells and whistles. Want to toss fireballs at the enemy? Check. Want to call forth a friendly familiar and together rule the world? Check. Or perhaps you already have a shield, but no sword to go with it. But you need a sword. Well, not to worry, here you can bind weapons temporarily through magic, allowing for truly powerful spell and mage builds. I really do mean it when I say that combat is on another level compared to your average Elder Scrolls experience, because this has that feel of a tough old school game, mixed with awesome modernizations. Enemies actually feel surprisingly clever and aggressive, courtesy of the latest AI update. Lonely corpse eaters hit hard and can jump early long distances, but don't necessarily have the most HP, so if you can get in a few hits, they should go down quite fast. In fact, what's great about this game is that you rarely feel like regular enemies have an unnatural amount of health. The important thing though is that it's up to you to actually land the hits you need to take them down, before they do the same to you. Going up against a few deranged infantrymen might not sound tough, but it is. Trust me when I say that the deranged part has only made them angrier. They're armored too, of course, but the main reason why they're so much fun to fight is that they make use of several tricks. Not only do they carry different weapons, making them either fast or quite slow but hard hitting, but they also actively dodge your attacks and even toss knives at you without needing to change their main weapon. And just like you, Tainted Grail's focus is not to simply give enemies an enormous amount of health, but to make them hit hard, and to make them unpredictable. The combat system is no Kingdom Come Deliverance level of medieval fencing authenticity, but it doesn't have to be. In fact, it manages to strike a perfect balance between fun and complexity, making it addictively easy to pick up and learn the fundamentals, but a tad more difficult to fully master and become comfortable with. It also doesn't hurt that the soundtrack for these battles sound downright badass, which is not a surprise really, since it's actually made by Donheim, the Danish Nordic folk musician. You're only making me angrier! This is gonna hurt! You're in for a world of hurt! What definitely is similar to Kingdom Come though, is that Tainted Grail currently only offers a first-person perspective. I think it works well for the game and certainly helps to bring us closer to the action, and it does make for a more immersive experience when you don't have to choose between the coolest camera angles. At the same time, looking at my character in the menus and seeing how cool I look definitely makes me want a third-person version. The devs have said that they'll consider making one for the full release, but that they're currently focused on making the main game as good as possible. And that's perfectly fine, honestly. I like the current view and find that the combat system is integrated well into it, but I also wouldn't mind a third-person option if it came along. 
With this grand new update, entire sections of the game have been revamped and improved, including redesigned environments and dungeons, better performance across the board, new quests and NPCs, better AI and so much added combat gameplay, even including new crafting, alchemy, cooking and fishing systems. And I have to say, even though I don't necessarily fancy myself a gourmet, I particularly love the cooking system, because it's actually vital. Because enemies hit hard, you actually need to come prepared, and that means cooking food that will heal you. Both you and your enemies will make use of healing agents by the way, which honestly is really cool to see. The cooking system could use a fleshing out, and even more unique effects from various ingredients would be awesome to see. But this early system still supports the game in the most important way, namely that it actually makes you want to pick stuff up and add them to a stew since you know you'll be needing it down the line. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how to make a good combined cooking and healing system, not just one that relies on potions, even though the game offers those as well. Oh, and make sure you save often, because this game, like I said, is hardcore. Even though Tainted Grail remains an early access game and will be even further improved and patched in the coming months and perhaps even years, I'm genuinely amazed at how good this game is even at this stage. Even though what's here is only one chapter out of four planned ones, and the game currently offers around 20 sweet hours of gameplay on the same character build. Sure, a few quest markers might be a bit buggy sometimes, or perhaps a few strands of hair are missing from this woman's bald head, but so much of the main meat is here, and you can really feel the passion the developers have and continue to pour into it. Despite being a dark and mysterious world, Avalon can also look beautiful, and the devs know better than even the most seasoned AAA titles how to make a fun and lasting combat system. I highly recommend checking out Tainted Grail, Fall of Avalon, right now, especially since the latest update vastly improved the game, but also because it's cheaper than the fully released version will be. So when you think about it, you're not only in for a lot of fun, but also saving yourself some money. And if that's not how King Arthur became king, well, then I honestly don't know how he did it. Perhaps it has something to do with that Excalibur sword, hmm. Anyway, make sure to leave a like and your thoughts in the comments. Let me know what you think of Tainted Grail Fall of Avalon and this new update. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much to Awaken Realms for sponsoring this video. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.